above Blight Avon, you can still see the scars of industry. Quarries and mines that have long since disappeared. And there's something else missing from these hillsides. Up until the 1960s, there was an entire village right here, a community that called this land their home. This was the village of Pufti, a traditional mining community dating back to the 18th century. There were rows of terraced houses, a chapel, a school, and a pair of pubs. Roy Gwillem grew up in Pulfti. Money was tight, but the villagers looked after each other. We were all the same. No, we have nothing. Hardly any money, but we was happy. Because there was no electric, no, no water in the, in the house, you had to go out and get it. And so, the toilets were outside, uh -huh. yeah? The water was outside, uh -huh. so you had to bring the water in to have a wash. Uh, I <laughs> just, just, just go down and get a bucket of water. And of course, it all had to be boiled on, on the coal fire, no cookers or anything like that. It was hard. No indoor plumbing, no sewage, no electricity. But what the village lacked in luxury, it made up for in spectacular panoramic views. This vast open countryside was the playground of cousins Granville and Robert, who spent their childhood in Pulfdi during the 1940s. It was a paradise. It was mountains, valleys, woods, and I could run free. Lovely, and I, it, 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 it's, um, it's affected me in later life when I became an adult. That was the making of me, of my personality. Those days have never lost me. The beauty of it, mate, because you didn't have any opera anymore, that you only had a bath once a week, which was wonderful when I was a kid. Yeah, one bath a week, yeah. <laughs> once a week, you had a bath. <laughs> Pulfdi was an old world community in a modern age. But the tide of change was coming. In the 1960s, Pulfdi was declared a slum. Residents were promised new housing just a few miles away, housing with indoor plumbing and electricity. For some, it was a chance to begin again. For others, it meant the end of their way of life. In 1963, the village was torn down. The houses, the school, the chapel, all gone. A 200-year-old community reduced to rubble. Do you remember that the fireplace was there? These ruins were once the family home of sisters Karen Simmons and Gaynor Lewis. So back here, we, we go to the stairs, wasn't it? That's right. There's a latch door there. It's the place that our mum and dad loved all their lives, all their married lives. This is where their hearts always were, and this is where they wanted their ashes to be. So we honoured their wishes in that way. And that's another reason that we feel so drawn to it, because when we come here, we have such happy memories of them. You know, Dad with his wheelbarrow, because he always, he didn't go anywhere without his wheelbarrow. <laughs> and Mum with her tin of Welsh cakes and making cups of tea for everybody, you know. So that's, that'll always be. That was the tradition, yeah. Something we think about when we're here. Today, these hills are silent, but the old community hasn't been forgotten. What is it like for you now, being back here? Oh, it's, it's pleasurable. It, you see a roots in it. 